frequency demodulation. So what are the methods for frequency demodulation? Before we start looking at the methods, let's define formally what a frequency demodulator is. So we can say here that uh, frequency demodulators, they produce output voltage whose instantaneous amplitude is directionally proportional to the instantaneous frequency of the FM input wave. For example, if you look here, down here we have an FM signal. The information is contained on the frequency. High frequency means high amplitude, low frequency means low amplitude. So the function of the demodulator is to get this sketch or this wave and produce the message itself. So how do we do that? How do we go from here to there? There are different methods. The first one is called frequency discrimination or slope circuit. And the other one is called PLL demodulators. And we have all techniques like zero crossing detectors and ratio detector. So we'll focus on the first two, frequency discrimination or slope circuits. Of course, they are followed by envelope detector. And then we'll look at PLL. Signal differentiation method will be one example what are of frequency, frequency discrimination. discrimination. What we so see here is a general form for the FM signal. The information is contained in the angle. The question is how can we get this information into the amplitude? Because if we can do so, we can use normal amplitude demodulation. So if you use a differentiator, for example, if you differentiate this signal, differentiating the angle, you'll get the derivative of the angle outside, and then we have sine instead of cosine. So what is this signal now after, after differentiation? Is it FM or AM? And the correct answer is that it's both. It's frequency and amplitude modulation. Let's, the, let's see this in more details in the next slide. Okay, so we got an our FM signal. We differentiate. Let's try to sketch. The original signal looks like this. Ideally, assuming constant amplitude. And then once we differentiate, it becomes FM and AM. And here how it looks. We have high frequency, high amplitude. Low frequency, low amplitude. The beauty about this signal is that the information is in both amplitude and frequency. Now we can use normal envelope detector with DC blocking and other details, and we get our message back, which is contained on the envelope. Now, because uh, envelope detection requires that the added component, the added DC is much greater than uh, the message itself, we can check that this term, okay, this term, which, is re which represents the message, is usually much, much smaller than the carrier frequency, which guarantees that the message will always be in the positive side, which is the condition for applying envelope detection. Because omega C plus KFMP, which is the peak of the message, is always positive quantity, which allows for envelope detection. So the message is always in the positive side of, of the carrier. Now, we can extend the same idea to phase detection. So what I'm doing here is just start with the phase modulation general form and apply the same block. Once we differentiate, we get the derivative of the message. Okay. Now, how do we how we how do we retrieve the message? After we do after we are done with the envelope detection, what we get will be something proportional to the derivative. So we just add an integral or an integrator, and we get we retrieve our message back. So if the signal is passed through an envelope detector, the output will be proportional to the derivative of the message, and an integrator will solve the problem. Now, we have one problem, because usually, before the, differ the, 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 the differentiation, what we get is not an exact constant amplitude. So what if the amplitude is not constant? What if we have A as function of time? So we have A as function of time, and then we have cosine omega ct plus theta t. This is general, whether it's fm or pm. Now, if, if you differentiate the multiplication of two functions will get the product, derivative of first times second, and so on. So to avoid this variation on the amplitude, we're going to need a device. This device is called band band pass limiter. It consists of a band pass filter, which comes later, and a limiter or a hard limiter, which comes first. So the name of kind of reversed. What does it do? What's a hard limiter first? A hard limiter 
basically will give you a positive constant positive one if your signal is positive and negative if the signal is negative so for example here here is the original signal the fm signal which contains the information in the amplitude in the frequency variation but it also has amplitude variations we need to get rid of this so after the hard limiter whenever the signal turns positive i will get constant one whenever the signal turns negative it'll just be a just a negative one so we have a square wave and the information is still contained you can see now it's not a train of equal spaced square wave this spacing is different than that different than that because of the information contained so in the first step we get rid of the time variation but we get a square wave now remember that a square wave is made of different harmonics as in Fourier series so we can pick the frequency of interest by using a band pass filter the band pass filter will convert the square wave into a sinusoidal clean wave with constant amplitude at the output so it will pick the proper signal and, and uh, get rid of the rest remember that everything here the band bus limiter is something that you need to do before the demodulation so we have hard limiter band bus filter and then we feed the clean signal to an FM or DM demodulator that's this is how it looks now we'd like in, we would like in the slide to generalize the concept so we don't have always to use a differentiator any circuit that discriminate frequencies like for example here is a filter an ideal filter you can see that we have a slope here slope in the frequency it's not an exact differentiator but it has a slope in the frequency if our message our modulated signal is if our modulated signal is within this band you can see that the output will be discriminated so although they have constant amplitude different frequencies using this circuit which has discrimination it will give you different frequencies different amplitude so in this circuit on this slide we generalize the signal differentiation technique to any frequency discriminator method so I can say h of omega it doesn't have to be d by dt but this has to have a slope in the frequency now uh, the last technique for differentiate for uh, detection of FM signal which we consider here is the phased lock loop remember that the phased lock loop or PLL was used earlier in the carrier acquisition so it's the same loop where we have a loop where we have an input signal we call it a loop because we have a feedback we have a multiplier that compare the two signals here we'll get the sum and difference this narrow band filter will pick the difference and it controls the oscillator earlier when we, when we use it for uh, carrier acquisition our output was from here but now the output will be here because the output is really based on the difference or variation in the angle of the signal so the first difference is that we get the output from here rather than from there we can make a few comments here that the PLL when fed with an FM signal it produced output which is taken from here which is proportional to the message signal now what is good about PLL compared with the other techniques the PLL has low cost and superior performance even at low signal to noise ratio even at low signal to noise ratio we have a superior performance and it's a low cost compared with other techniques and this is why I'm putting it in green but uh, you have to be careful that you take the output from the proper point now to conclude if the input was PM we just need an integrator at the output so to summarize we have done two different techniques for the carrier uh, for the FM demodulation, frequency discrimination, and phased look loop. Thank you very much.